रुको रुको दोस्तों ये बेचारी अंधी है अंधी क्या मतलब आंखों से देख नहीं सकती लेकिन इसका हम बताते हैं इसकी स्टोरी क्या है भैया क्या स्टोरी है इसकी आ, इसका नाम सोमर सेट है आप इसके यहाँ पे मार्क्स भी देख सकते हैं और अगर आप जूम इन करें इसकी आंखों में भी आप ध्यान से देख सकते हैं ये फुली ऑलमोस्ट फुली ब्लाइंड है एक आंख से शायद टेन इसको बेरली दिखता होगा तो ये कैलकटा का स्टेट हो गया ये स्ट्रीट्स पे घूमता था और पता नहीं लोगों को क्या आ, ऐसा हुआ कि मतलब उन्होंने इसको अंधाई अंधाई कर दिया उसकी आंखों में ब्लीच डाल के आ, पता नहीं दो आदमी आए और क्या उनके माइंड में ऐसा था क्या उनका साइकोटिक ट्रिगर हुआ और क्या हेट ट्रिगर हुई कि उन्होंने सीधा ब्लीच पाउडर इसकी आंखों में डाला और इसको अंधा कर दिया तब से इसको कुछ भी नहीं दिखता है Uh, हम इसकी ट्रेनिंग और रिहेबिलिटेशन काफ़ी टाइम से कर रहे हैं हम इसको मोस्टली साउंड और स्निफिंग से काफ़ी कुछ सिखा चुके हैं ऑब्स्टिकल्स अब ये कहीं पे भी ठुकता नहीं है कहीं पे भी बम्प नहीं होता है किसी भी डॉग से इसको फाइट नहीं होती किसी भी इंसान से इसको डर नहीं लगता है इसकी स्टोरी में बेस्ट पार्ट ये है कि जब से हमारे पास आया ये इतना प्यार दिखाता है इतना अफेक्शन इतना कंपेनियनशिप दिखाता है कि इसके अंदर आ, कोई भी दुश्मनी नहीं है कोई भी मतलब हेटरेड नहीं है इंसानों के लिए जबकि इंसानों ने इसकी लाइफ डिस्ट्रॉय कर दी जैसे इंसान अर्थ के साथ कर रहे हैं नेचर के साथ वातावरण जानवरों के साथ कर रहे हैं वैसे ही उन्होंने इसके साथ किया बट इस जानवर से हम ये सीख सकते हैं कि तब भी इसकी लाइफ में अभी जितने भी इंसान हैं सबके साथ ये फुली अफेक्शनेट है एक बार भी बाइट नहीं करता एक बार भी डरता नहीं है गुस्सा नहीं करता किसी भी डॉग को किसी भी ह्यूमन को हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द एपिसोड 43 ऑफ सुमन वर्सेस ह्यूमन ऑन दिस एपिसोड आई हैव अ अमेजिंग पर्सनालिटी ही इज अ रियल सेलिब्रिटी आई कॉल ही इज अ सेलिब्रिटी पेट ट्रेनर मिस्टर अदनान खान Adnan Khan is a legend I call him because he is serving that community of species which can't talk but yet they got lot of emotions for people he is the founder of K9 foundation and K9 school for the dog so let's quickly welcome Mr Adnan Khan on Suman versus Human Mr Adnan Khan welcome to Suman versus Human Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute honor to be here. Adnan ji, I'm super excited today because I'm following you since a quite a long time and uh, the kind of work you are doing is mind blowing Adnan ji. Adnan ji, before I come deep into the programs what you do, I have a question ready for you. Adnan ji, sure. I want to understand basically today people are so excited they jump in to start schools they jump in to start colleges they jump in to start universities but you are one such person one such a different person who wants to develop a kind of school for pets and those pets which cannot talk so what made you to start a school like this So uh I mean I have a long story around my journey towards dogs but first I'll give you the shorter story and yeah. then we can dive deeper into the longer story. Yeah. So all in all the main thing that I have in mind is that uh you know because um I love dogs so much and I've been around uh you know learning from them since childhood I never had my own pet dog throughout my life in the beginning. Mm. So um you know my main purpose was that uh, a, there is a lot of abandoned dogs in shelters and people are giving up on their pets and one of the main reasons that they are doing that is that uh, maybe out of you know aggression or behavior issues or the dog is peeing in the house and they are not able to manage the dog mm. so i realized that the most important thing is to have a clear uh, you know communication between the owner and the pet and to have a proper education system and a proper educational institution which combines knowledge and learning for both so we are an interspecies school we not only take dogs admission for schooling but we also have courses for the parents to learn about dog behavior training breeds mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all kinds of knowledge so both of them kind of come on the same page we are like a translator or a mediator or a lawyer to be able to get both people on the same page and the ultimate goal for this is that you know if you have a good happy life with your pet dog mm. you will not feel uh, frustrated and want to give up on them or give them away or give them to someone so ultimately even good training and tra- our training schools the vision is that the abandonment reduces 
and mm. people don't give up on their dogs because there are too many homeless dogs in shelters and we are not able to manage them what was your encouragement because people will discourage you to start such an establishment right because right, there is right. there is there is possibility of huge financial losses in right, such ventures right, absolutely so i'll i'll go i'll start from the beginning yeah. actually i grew up in a very uh, yes, you know yes. small flat with a big family so we had like about 7 8 people in let's say um, a 2 bhk so we didn't have a lot of space to mm. and my father was the only earning member so we didn't have a lot of space to have a pet dog mm. because of that i was always hanging out with the street dogs and rescuing them through a uh, early age in childhood and then when i was 10 years old i actually had tinnitus in my right ear which is a ringing sound which is very troublesome mm. uh, so in tinnitus what happens is that there is always that uh, ringing sound uh, like an inverter battery mm. so uh, you know throughout my childhood i had a lot of trouble because nobody would be able to hear that and i would i you know so because of that i became very introverted and very outcasted and you know used to hang out alone and mostly in parks with cats and dogs and i didn't enjoy being around people that much because i was very different mm-hmm. and um, eventually what happened that throughout my childhood i i uh, you know learned so much from dogs uh, my main motive by the time i was 16 years old my main motive was that i will never work too much in any job i will always try to start something of my own so that i can decide how you know i can decide about my time and my employment and about my own creativity hmm. and uh, when i graduated my school and college i got my first dog when i was 20 years old and uh, it was a bull mastiff so hmm. that dog is very difficult to train but um, i became like very famous within 6 months because i was able to teach that dog to turn on the ac turn off the ac oh. and uh, say english words like mama and all those things Oh. and um, earlier in my childhood like middle of my childhood i was also battling more chronic conditions like uh, hansen's disease which is like leprosy which is mm-hmm. degenerative skin and nerve disorder basically so dogs helped me come out of a lot of like mental health problems as well and out of loneliness and out of uh, you know difficult dark mm-hmm. situations so when i finally decided to start my own business i had so much knowledge about dogs and people were calling me from all over the city to help them out with their pet dog and eventually people started paying me like i they were insisting that i should guide them and teach them about dog training so mm-hmm. then ultimately i decided that i will open one place that uh, nobody has done before in india mm-hmm. and um, you know in in the us and europe and uk there's a lot of such schools which are designed for dogs so that's how canine schools first um branch launched in 2016 in delhi and um, we had a lot of good feedback we were doing uh, you know swimming as well we had a swimming pool so we not only had a pet school we did, had a five star pet hotel and a, a spa and a swimming pool as well so in that swimming pool we were specializing in rehabilitating paralyzed dogs also like dogs with disabilities and dogs with anxiety and you know uh, nerve disorders and hip dysplasia so we were also working with a lot of veterinary doctors to rehabilitate do physical rehab for those mm-hmm. animals as well excellent so you mentioned that uh, your dog helped you recover from serious medical conditions also right correct now correct. what i feel is people bring in dogs to treat them as a companionship so right. dogs are such a beautiful companion with unconditional love right so do you really think that uh, dog could be a good companion to help people come out of their mental uh, issues absolutely so there's uh, so in fact that was the reason that my foundation was born called canine healers foundation so we had started in 2014 with my first and second dog homer and stella and we used to take them to meet people who were you know lonely and we used to take them to uh, special schools like tamanna special school and various others mm-hmm. kids with autism down syndrome cerebral palsy and other developmental disabilities they eventually were able to give them so much hope and so much comfort because you know people uh, in human beings 
if they feel that they are different and they are not comfortable hanging around with uh, you know for example normal people mm. so um, a lot of times even with people with autism or dyslexia or depression or anxiety there's a lot of like outcasting where they you know they they don't feel that other human beings understand them mm. with dogs even though they can't speak words they have this beauty of never judging anyone so mm. a dog will love a person no matter if they're rich or poor whatever their skin complexion is whatever their physical you know abilities are mm. whether they're limited whether they're uh, you know complete so the beauty of dogs the two things that i always try to learn from them is that they never judge and secondly they always live in the moment so you know even if something very bad has happened to them half an hour ago they still go on with their life hunt for their food show compassion to others and uh, through our foundation we have been able to help so many dogs we are neutering many dogs around north india we have made many therapy dogs to go and give therapy sessions all across the country um, now we're also training search and rescue dogs to look for lost people you know in earthquakes and avalanche wow. and things like that one of our main programs today uh, in the last year that picked up uh, we are the first um, you know organization in india that is uh, teaching uh, juvenile criminals in tihar jail that's the main jail in uh, delhi mm-hmm. and there are kids of age between 10 to 18 they are under 18 years of age and they are um, you know in jail for some crime or the other so we are teaching them dog handling dog training dog grooming so that they come out of their uh, you know lifestyle of mm. you know crime and uh, difficult choices in life and they can start come joining a career which is legal and you know and even working with dogs is a is a risky and a you know very physically challenging uh, position so mm. we are trying to uh, convert and channelize a lot of kids uh, um, you know from society into coming this side as well when we talk about protection and security dogs are those species which tries to protects you no matter how risky the situation might be and you got that credit of training dogs in the parliament of the country right so i want to know more about it adnan so i have been learning from all of the top uh, at least 12 or 13 top uh, police dog and uh, army uh canine units all over the all over the world mm. so my main school was in netherlands police dog center holland then i trained in czech republic us belgium germany various countries from uh you know under police officers and police dog suppliers and my main motive was to improve the you know security standards of our country mm. uh in dogs so all of the dogs i wanted in india to be equal quality like the usa mm. special forces navy seals belgium france german holland east police academies the quality of dogs that they have i wanted to improve that you know quality in india as well so i have been invited by nsg and parliament and right now we are working on uh, you know creating and supplying private security dogs for people for their personal protection in case there is a politician or a celebrity or a cricketer or an artist sometimes they uh, you know they want to add security uh, you know in their house and for their mm-hmm. family so having a dog who can you know be compassionate and protect them that dog will be most loyal because mm-hmm. you know even with security staff you never know they yeah. can sleep they can be bribed they can be intimidated yes. they will not always put their life on the line you can have 100 security guards and a person is still not that safe basically and uh, we are also specializing in uh, bomb sniffer dogs so that's what i was doing in lok sabha and parliament in 2020 and 21 that uh, i was improving the standard of the dogs that were uh, sniffing for explosives for anyone who would enter the parliament because there were some attacks in parliament long ago so we are now improving the dog security in that region and uh, all of the handlers were learning from me about how to make them uh make the dogs faster and sharper in their skills just like uh the level that we have in Europe and US basically wow adnan ji you are known and you are also re- very reputed for training dogs of celebrities now you might have seen dogs at celebrities and also 
you're familiar with those dogs which are with uh, ordinary citizen of the country i right. want to know do you really find any difference in the treatment between the celebrity dog and the dog which stays with a indian middle class um so personally i mean this is a this is a very interesting question <laughs> so personally my experience has been that celebrities have uh you know are way more involved with their dog mm. uh, when they are available when they are traveling they are away but they can't do anything mm. right mm. but when they are there they are fully involved with their dog and very deeply involved for few reasons mm. one is that you know even celebrity life is very lonely when they step out everyone wants to yeah. wants to just take photos with them chase them write news about them but not really like talk to them on an equal level Mm-hmm. secondly celebrities are already rich and famous so they're not that uh, always stressed out and pressured in life and always running around and neglecting family and dogs and all of that because the middle class is always in the rat race they're always running to reach somewhere right yeah, so but right. celebrities technically have already reached so they are a lot more calm when they're at home they live life more like a vacation basically mm-hmm. so they are very um, you know involved with their pet dogs and they actually personally train them they actually personally get you know take them to the vet and groom them and they 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 take good care of uh, their pet like their family and mm. even more than the uh, you know cars and watches and all that they are like a lot more compassion and uh, i personally feel that because they have such a high pressure and uh, kind of a you know depressing life because it's all about money and filled with chasing you know it's a fast paced life Mm-hmm. so they need the animal to give them therapy as well now with the indian middle class yeah obviously there are you know all types of people mm-hmm. so there are mostly for me the people are you know that come to me they will be willing to give their whole life to the animal mm-hmm. but overall the indian middle class also has the two types of people who are taking pets because of popularity like just to show off mm-hmm. so they will not stick with their dog too much they will give up and then there are people who are you know even if they have pets but because they don't have maybe a good job or enough money they're always frustrated so they're not able to give a happy life to themselves or to their pet dog so mm-hmm. then that makes that makes it very difficult for them to uh, you know you know cope properly so obviously if someone is has more money and uh, you know more space and a bigger house they can enjoy life and spend more time with the dog but celebrities i know are more attached to their dog than any friends or family in my personal experience adnan ji now when people get dogs and when they welcome dogs at home they start living with it and mm-hmm. they develop a kind of relationship with the dog they newly get in yes now, over a period of time the mm-hmm. relationship between the master and the dogs becomes so strong and they broke literally broke into tears when they unfortunately lose it i mm-hmm. the trauma make them suffer for a quite a long time right. so do you have any any suggestion for those families or those individual how can they overcome out of it and uh, you know what is your experience uh, with this so personally this is probably one of the uh, you know toughest uh, you know situations in the life of a dog owner the time when the you know dog you know dies either because they are too old or because of some accident or illness and the hard you know the a hard the dark truth of uh, you know our planet is that the dogs have a shorter life they live for 8 10 12 15 years and humans live for 60 70 80 90 years so you know they end up you know the dogs end up living and dying in front of us basically mm. and um, i actually because i have many dogs right now i have you know close to 50 60 dogs because we also oh. train and supply security dogs and my own personal dog that i have around that you know mm. so at many times people leave their dogs behind so i take them and make them you know my own family so um you know i have faced many of my dogs over time have you know some condition or die or have some accident like you know so uh, 
uh, like even even last year, I recently lost one of my closest, my good pastor, to um, a steel a steel rupture when she was five years old. So with this, you know, it kind of feels when a dog uh, passes away, it kind of feels like they have taken a part of your body from you. It literally feels like you know it's a complete hollow, like complete nothing less. Mm-hmm. Like there is no no point of it further. And the and the and the sad thing is that people after that, because they are not able to cope with that loss, mm. they feel that they never want to get another yeah, pet dog. Yeah, yeah. And that's one problem because it just makes uh, you know nobody can replace that pet dog. Even if they get another one, that mm. doesn't mean that the previous one is being replaced. It only means that we are kind of uh, you know uh, reducing our pain by by you know adding another. family member i usually say that if you know that your dog is about to go you mm. should add one maybe before they die a few one year before they die or six months before they die so that there is always an overlap and it makes it much easier mm. but mm. in case somebody has lost a dog it's always nice to uh, canalize the grief by doing donations by you know paying a shelter for taking care of homeless dogs So at least we know that you know the when you're missing that uh, dog, uh, you know the dog that left us, we are able to do good, more good things for dogs around us, basically, right? So that way it, it is. And uh, we in fact have our K9 Healers Foundation has grief counseling and grief management where uh, people can come to our place and meet our dogs just to feel, you know, when they have when they have the void. we mm-hmm. can fill up that void by sending our dogs to give them some relief and therapy and we have partnered with a therapy company called psychenty so they are like um available they have therapists available all the time where people can call them and and take counseling for their grief and loss pet mr adna when you look at the dogs on the road the stray dogs what do you feel every time you look at the dog so in fact well, the main uh, you know purpose for me becoming a dog trainer was because i learned a lot of things from stray dogs on the road mm-hmm. and this is unique to our country so that's why i feel that uh, the indian trainers the indian dog trainers have more uh, unique and special skill sets basically mm-hmm. uh, because they have more access to stray dogs and um, trainers abroad they only have access to pure breed yeah, and pet yeah, dogs basically yeah. so um so yeah i personally feel that they are one of the smartest and sturdiest dogs healthiest and they have a very long life span and um, and the people around should ideally you know respect them and uh, not see them as uh, vermin or pests you know so there are um, all types of people there are like stray dog haters who are trying to poison them get rid of them and they try to injure them by car and everything then there are stray dog lovers who are you know kind of feeding them taking care of them so so yeah now now there's a lot of different opinions about stray dogs in mm. in india these days mm. but i heard that uh, stray dogs are running out of food in most part of the country uh no that's not true actually stray dogs are uh, primarily scavengers so they don't need a supply of food they will find their own food Mm-hmm. and uh, most of the times they are hanging around a butcher or a restaurant or a uh, you know mm-hmm. a street vendor and in fact the thing is the the direct correlation is that when any city is uh, the civilization is increasing the litter and garbage is increasing you know in every city there is so much garbage outside yeah. so automatically stray dogs find food from garbage and their population increases because nobody is neutering them yeah, nobody is operating yeah. them so um the population is actually increasing more and more in cities because of garbage and um uh, you know litter around basically when it comes to sterilization of stray dogs do they really need to be taken care in india because it is not <laughs> happening right now uh yeah so one of the main things for taking care of them are like you know we should have small stray dog sanctuaries uh from the government to maintain their records and population and a lot of neutering because if they keep producing more and more we will see puppies everywhere the stray dog haters will try to kill them they will get run over by a car and yeah. nowadays there are some challenges where 
when stray dogs are not getting proper food or they're getting too much food in colonies mm. then they're getting aggressive towards people as well towards yeah. kids and helpers and maids and all that when a person is facing problem from a stray dog like uh, when the dog is really aggressive when you're walking on the road and it it comes behind you do you have any tips to advise like you know how to get rid of it so the simplest thing i know it's very difficult but the simplest thing is not to run away or to scream or to throw rocks or st- uh, sticks or anything i feel that the nicest thing is to freeze safest thing is to freeze in that position and not run away if possible just splash water at them and uh, oh. normally if a stray dog is chasing me mm. um i try to go in their direction in a very dominant stance so oh. they realize that this person is not scared of me so they don't pick up a fight or they don't chase anyone who is uh, you know confident they chase people who are screaming and running and you know trying to shoo them away and panicking because they have a prey drive so anything that looks like a cat or a squirrel or panicking basically mm-hmm. they try to trigger the they get triggered basically and they try to ca- catch on their neck and things like that so usually i if stray dog is chasing me i run towards them in their direction in a in a scary way and but don't do that if there are more than two stray dogs uh-huh. because then they are in a pack yeah. usually in yeah. a pack then best thing is to have uh whatever is nearby you know let's say little uh, object to just mm. block like a chair or something just to block yourself from okay. them and water is the best because they really don't like water splashed oh. on their face and from the human side it's like you know harmless because we're not hitting them we're not injuring them poisoning mm-hmm. them it's just water so it's the most humane deterrent actually i personally seen uh, adnan ji that uh, the stray dogs taken away by the municipal authorities will brutally kill them no so actually municipal authorities are supposed to pick up the stray dogs and uh, uh, neuter them so they take them they give them um, uh, the vaccination and they take away their reproductive organs male or female they stop uh, their uh, you know reproduction and usually they are supposed to put them back in the same place basically this is supposed to be happening okay. happening yeah right? yeah Yeah. uh but the thing is that municipal corporations are not getting enough uh, funds and they are not using those funds mm. for neutering purposes mm. but uh, the thing for uh, you know what you're mentioning happens more in private societies where yeah. you have rwa mm. and uh, uh, private security guards so the senior citizens in the rwa they go to the private security guard and they threaten them that i will take your job you have to get rid of these dogs and they give them money also like they will give guards 500 rupees mm. and then the guards will put all the puppies in a bag and try to kill them throw them poison them get rid of them basically mm. and they actually hire uh, you know local laborers helpers yeah. and security people to brutally kill the dogs for yes. reducing the population and they do it very secretively so yes. this stuff is happening more in private communities actually because yes. municipal corporation honestly wants the best uh, you know treatment because in the law in ipc for animals i don't know the exact numbers mm-hmm. but the uh, the ipc for indian penal code for the animal welfare mm-hmm. um, it is you know illegal for anyone to harm or injure a dog right mm-hmm. so the government cannot do it because they they are the government themselves they will you know get into big problem Yeah. private people do it in you know in hiding when it's late night or early morning they try to uh, you know kill the dogs and yes. get rid of them and dispose them so that's a big problem you know when we try when we catch this situation in the cctv we should immediately take these people to police and put them in the uh, news headlines and you know publicize that these people have brutally murdered dogs because mm-hmm. ultimately they are not caring about the law Yes. but everyone cares about their image and their name in society when people in their friends and family and their whole name gets distributed that this person killed six puppies mercilessly then automatically a lot of people will stop doing it over time adnan ji now when i talk about uh, service dogs support dogs and guide dogs these are not common in country like india not so, at but all no. this is very much common elsewhere so why is this gap so i'll tell you two two points one is mm. the main point for the country that 
before I came and started this company in 2016 for mm. training of dogs, mm. there was maybe only one or two trainers who even know how to train a service dog. Mm. Okay, but they had not done this as a service for the community to train, um, you know, a dog for a blind person or a disabled mm. person, person in a wheelchair or even person with like panic attacks. We There's a lot, there's a huge... Uh, you know, list of things dogs can do to help human beings. They can mm. even sniff out cancer, diabetes, epilepsy, thyroid inside the person's body just from their nose. And they can assist, you know, people on wheelchairs. They can assist people for vision impairment. So there's a lot of potential. And mm. earlier, nobody knew about it. Nobody was doing it. Right now, people know about it. But we only, uh, my school is doing, my foundation, K9 Healers Foundation, is picking this project up and we are we have at least two dogs for each uh, style of uh, service mm. and then when we have anyone interested we can create such a dog for them basically so the reason that it wasn't happening is that you know india indian government and people don't really care about animals that much mm. so there's not much promise the other problem is that you know because i have trained um, a cocker spaniel for uh, two um, blind girls, they were twins and mm. around 19, 20 years of age. Mm. So I was actually helping them develop a bond with their dog and the dog should be able to help them out. Mm. But, uh, you know, in India, the culture outside is very different. Mm. The roads are so challenging. If if someone, for example, if someone with uh, visual impairment has a mm. service mm. dog and they're on the road, you know, what if strays attack that dog, then we will not be able to defend it. There are no strays in the US. Yeah. Then there are people's mindset because it's still a developing country. Mm. People have very, um, you can say, different kind of mindset as well. What if somebody tries to hit the dog when we're mm. walking into some new area? What if somebody tries to pet the dog? There's a lot of stealing. What if we're, you know, somebody just opens the collar and steals our dog and tries to like, poison them, sedate them. So right now it's very new stage, very early stage for, uh, you know, this kind of a thing to start in India mm. because uh, even basic pet dogs are not able to go out with people. Yeah, they are yeah. not able to, even basic pets, you know, are always pulling on the leash. They don't take them out for walks. They don't yeah. take them with family or for outings and things like that. So India is like at least 30 years behind US and UK in terms of dog keeping and dog training practices what is the vision for future the situation will be changing and it will be more friendly in future for keeping our service yeah. dogs in india so, so there's many factors one is that all of us need to come together and you know support causes like now canine healers foundation is picking up the cause for service dogs for disabilities and uh, impairments and we uh, have trainers who can train a uh, guide dog for any disability from an early stage and attach it with the owner by the age of two years. So it's going to mm -hmm. be a two-year project for any person. And then when people talk about it more, people come together, we raise awareness, we start you know, getting donations, getting support, because this is a uh, capital-intensive project. Like you yeah. know, training yeah. one guide dog becomes an expensive, uh, uh, you know, at least 10 to 15 lakhs minimum is a starting mm -hmm to complete a guide dog and give it to someone. Mm -hmm. So our NGO would definitely need big companies and big organizations and supporters to give contributions so that, you know, even even some uh, some company giving CSR of 50 lakhs, we will be able to give five guide dogs mm -hmm. to people, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and five is not a lot, but, you know, for training five guide dogs for two years, we will need, you know, many trainers and a yes. training facility and a training program. So it's a long, uh, you know, it's a, it takes a lot of infrastructure. But uh, the more we talk about it, we will get more and more people willing to support this cause. Either a company from CSR or individuals with, uh, you know, willingness. And slowly we will kind of get all the uh, necessary things that we need. Um, maybe we want to import some tools from abroad or get a trainer from abroad. So all these things are like a big project. And, uh, and then slowly we will use the power of uh, media and social media to promote that India's first official guide dog for this purpose has been deployed. Then the patient can talk to the news and say how their life is improved 
with this dog and then the news starts spreading more and more and then more people will come to us and it will become we ha- we have to then make it viral after we've trained the first two or three guide dogs basically personally i'm a blind and like me many mm-hmm. blind people in india really mm-hmm. miss a guide dog because our friends Absolutely. abroad everyone have a has a guide dog while they are walking mm-hmm. on the street yeah correct correct so you are doing very noble work adnan ji and if someone if some of my listeners want to contribute for this beautiful cause by a donation is there is any mechanism do you welcome donations from individuals absolutely so our foundation is called canine healers foundation and uh, my wife tista is leading it and she is from a very strong uh, media and uh, development background she was leading very big um, news channels and ngos mm. so now i've given her the complete uh, you know growth strategy for this project and i only and only focus on training the dogs so i will get her to reach out to you and we have our websites and we have uh, you know our banking details as well so you can uh, you know support and donate for projects and we can take this forward uh, in various different ways and i'll be even happy that we can come together and make an individual small little facility of uh, you know training the guide dogs for the blind training the handlers and attendants and assistants and even uh, you know the community for the blind comes together and i uh, you know guide them through i have actually trained a few uh, uh, blind people using mm. their hands through tactile dog training at least wow. four five people throughout my career so i have taken their hands hold food in one hand and the dog in the other hand and i've taught them to train their own dog even though they can't see it because i so i have my specialization of even giving a professional training course to uh, you know people with no vision and impairments Excellent. so we can come together and design programs seminars podcasts and uh, you know and your your community will come you know your friends and your network will listen to us and more ideas and more you know good wishes will come together and i think we will be able to make this a very big Lovely. Lovely. Uh, project because our population is too high and you know we need to uh pay attention to the neglected communities as well who no yes. one is doing anything for amnani you know what the population is estimated to 10 crore disabled people in this country oh my god so it needs a lot of lot of support which yes. we're not giving right now yes. so i think we need to do and i think through my dogs and uh, you know dog training and and you know i also through because i am a brain stroke survivor as well i have a stent in my brain and i uh, you know had an optic nerve damage so i had lost vision in my right eye for a bit and leprosy survivor and i to survivor so i myself fall in a lot of like uh, minor disability categories so i personally uh, you know relate and that's how i got these dogs to start doing good things for human beings because a lot of people we have even gone and connected worked with lgbtq community because the transgender community is all very outcasted they don't have disabilities but they are not uh, considered uh, human beings so even with them we have done therapy visits so there's a lot of potential and i would love to design and build a guide dog uh, institute with uh, you know my canine healers foundation because i have a global network so i have people from all over the world who will be willing to support us and we just need to find first few people who are willing to uh, you know take a dog from us then we design a program around it we see what all is needed then we try to raise uh, you know some funds and donations and grant for this project and then take a few years and you know finish these dogs they will usually be like a labrador or a golden retriever or a german shepherd and then uh, we will send the trainer to uh, bond the dog with the with patient and they can regularly learn from us basically and our uh, team will be attached with the uh, with the uh, individual for life so it is not like once we have given the dog now it is their problem we will regularly call we will regularly check and make sure that the dog is doing the right things uh, always dear listener this is a great cause and uh, such people like adnan are taking forward this movement i want you guys to support as much as you can and all the 
helpful information links to the website and donation pages are in the description i kindly humbly request you guys to come forward and fund this program so that there will be a huge impact in the indian communities mr adnan few people maybe not all but few people use a very painful you know procedure for the dog during the training process so what do you feel about it and they use painful collars while the dog is getting trained and stuff like that so what is your point on this what kind of procedures you guys follow during training so so actually the painful methods and the old school uh, you know uh, dog training that i will kind of not call it dog training it is like close to uh torture for the animal mm-hmm. because they are forcing the animal to do something which they don't want to do and this has come this method has come from the circus life because in circus they used to uh, force any animal whether it's elephant lion any animal to do uh, you know activities by force but um, it is not about the collars because all the collars actually are uh, that are around even if it's a remote collar or if it's a metal collar they are all designed uh, for the well being of the dog they might look or feel a little bit strange mm. but it depends on who is using it it's like that mm. even in horses you know horses and buffaloes there are uh, reasons to put horseshoe and a saddle and you know the thing on the nose for the uh, for yeah, uh, yeah. taking the leash around so these are all tools that are designed by animal lovers Mm-hmm. but it depends on who is using them but the old school trainers who are using very torturous methods mm-hmm. they definitely need to be um, you know counted out and not you know hired and not called a uh, dog trainers basically because they will ultimately ruin the name of the new age trainers who are trying to bring in the science and compassion into dog training basically and uh, in my training system and i have trained over 600 people now all over the world who are certified under me and they are all professional trainers in different uh, vocations mm. so in my personal uh, training system we only use positive uh, methods like food and a lot of verbal motivation a lot of mm. praise we use we definitely use leash and collar and different types of collars but our primary uh, focus and our primary um, you know a uh, uh, objective in my training system is to have a strong bond with the animal that even if it's if there's no leash in the picture even if you're not saying anything to the animal they are still focused at you and they still come and follow you after that sometimes to protect them we need to put a leash you know if they are on the main road if it's a hilly area if there are other dangerous dogs or people or anything around the leash is sometimes important for even protecting the life of the animal more than mm-hmm. more than controlling them more than you know punishing them it's actually helpful so that the dogs stay safe from any kind of danger as well and um, you know even in guide dogs you know we train dogs for mobility assistance so we train the dogs to be very calm and relaxed on the leash um, but for the first two years when we are teaching them to be calm we are using different methods like crate training a lot of food and um, and then we teach them that they will get food when they are calm when they are slow and then we teach them desensitization to get used to uh, a stick or a wheelchair and then various different practices and activities so mm-hmm. the training also goes through a lot of different discipline methods but ultimately you will see that in our training methods dogs always happy and bonded and wagging their leash and they're never scared of uh, you know working with us and they're never scared of being around us so you can see the quality of training methods just by the dog if the dog is always stressed out or scared or anxious then they are always under pressure if the dog is always happy and uh, um, they you'll automatically see that in their energy then you know that they're not being punished um, mm. during training when it comes to spaying a dog in india spaying is not that common i don't know because what i feel is in india people don't spay their personal dogs at home spaying is it going against the nature and what is your point of view on that personally uh, dogs are not 
you know nature in the way that they they are not coming from a jungle or a forest dogs mm-hmm. are very much man made uh, creature yeah, yeah. because the natural creature was a wolf or a fox or you know uh, on the essentially the root of the dog is the asiatic uh, wolf and the african wolf mostly mm-hmm. asiatic mm-hmm. so when it's a wolf they are supposed to be in nature they're not supposed to be in a cage they're not supposed to be in a zoo or a house but mm-hmm. in terms of dogs there it is a man made species um and the stray dogs are half man made like you know they are coming from dogs that are naturally evolved mm. but they are yeah. mixed breeds with the city pure breed dogs and they became stray dogs as well mm. so mm. personally saying is very very important because yeah. if we do not control the population then there will be a lot of uh, you know conflict between dogs and human beings mm. because every new area human beings are also um you know uh, causing a lot of uh, you know problem by building new developments around forest areas mm. so we are taking away land from animals on a regular basis yeah and what happens is that dogs were already over there now we're trying to remove the dogs from the place they were already there and we designed buildings around those places basically mm. so mm. it is very important that dogs 99% of the country's dogs need to be spayed and neutered because we do not need to overpopulate the country with with dogs only dogs who are providing any impact to society we should replicate them like if there is a good security dog then he should produce more so that there are more such good dogs if there is a guide dog for the blind then that dog should have more pups so that more people should get help right mm-hmm. but if it's a stray dog you know one stray dog can mate with four females in the same week and then they will have five puppies each so 20 pups within like you know four months will come out six months later all of those pups will be of breeding age so it, mm-hmm. it's just very fast multiplying problem if we don't uh, you know everyone takes neutering on their own hands how is veterinary infrastructure in our country mr adnan um i would say since in the last um 5 6 years mm-hmm. it has drastically improved mm-hmm. and um, this is because there is a lot of international investors interest in veterinary infrastructure so i am based out in delhi and in delhi there are few new veterinary companies that are coming out who are funded from japan and germany and us so they are able to uh, you know improve the standards by bringing international vets and um, you know those vets train them over here those vets learn about the indian situations and problems and medicines and then the indian vets are also you know realizing that they want to be uh, equal on par with the international standard basically mm-hmm. but the veterinary education infrastructure right now is not so good Mm. all the veterinary degrees the bachelor of veterinary science which is bvsc mm. is um, you know the curriculum is very uh, weak for dogs and cats so Absolute. the bvsc is only teaching you bovine and equine mm. cows buffaloes horses and donkeys mm. they are only teaching medicine about uh, these animals mm. because um, these are government veterinary schools so they are only focusing on farmers and army and police right so they are they only have cows horses and mm-hmm. you know donkeys and um, and the buffaloes and things like that so all the vets when they have a bachelor degree they don't have any knowledge or any training on dogs cats rabbits anything mm-hmm. when they go for masters degree they have one subject called small animals in which all these animals get covered in one module Mm. so all the vets who are graduating they literally have no experience in dogs and cats mm. they learn when they open a clinic and the first dog comes that's when they start learning about these dogs and cats mm. so they are you know all vets are actually experimenting on the job and they have big degrees so people listen to them but honestly i realize that they also don't know that much and that leads uh, to lot of mortality right absolutely mortality and a lot of misinformation the vets are guiding uh, the pet parents on uh, food and training even when they don't know anything 
the vets are misdiagnosing a lot of times vets are like you know giving wrong dose so over time i have me and my senior team have learned uh, medicine ourselves mm. so all the basic stuff we try to do it on our own unless it's a major uh, you know surgery and stuff mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. and we are able to learn the paravet uh practices like basic drips and injection and medicine because it helps in rescue work as well as like mm-hmm. as it will save the dog or you know suddenly breathing a security dog or any emergency we are also learning these things ourselves and um, our foundation is also planning to bring an uh, american veterinary chain of uh, you know uh, and that is a need of an hour need of an hour really yeah, important to india need, so that they do the at least the practices from america we get some vet from there to teach over here as well now when we look at the government legislation recently we heard banning of 23 dog breeds in the country what do you have to say about this ban is this fair honestly banning is just a short term escape from um, you know addressing the real problem and the real problem is not a particular breed the problem is actually the people who got these dogs um, didn't invest in training the dog and they just neglected the animal till the last day the animals were not getting proper exercise and a good environment and a good life so in case they got opened up they were very aggressive and they took out the aggression on some child or some you know people around so it's actually the breed that is getting blamed for uh the negligence of the humans and the solution is actually to mandate training as soon as you get a dog you need to get training from a training school and a license and a certificate that your dog is educated and you are educated to handle your dog that should be the law instead of banning the breeds because uh, and you know out of the 23 breeds listed uh, oh, 13 of them don't even exist in india so oh. it is it was very unresearched unverified uh, kind of and i was invited on ndtv to speak about this as well it was completely unverified uh, information that was declared um, and you know and nobody gave a solution imagine if i have that breed hmm. and somebody banned it now what am i supposed to do shall i throw it kill it send it somewhere like you know there's nobody wrote anything about how to manage this uh, the problem that what if these uh, breeds are with people what will they do with their pets they love them so much mm. how uh, they cannot get rid of them so it caused a lot of mental anguish mm. and turmoil mm. and stress to people who were owning pit bulls and rottweilers and even well behaved dogs they were getting pressurized by society that we will kick you out of the neighborhood because you have this kind of dog mm. and i also shifted my family like away from the city so that i can keep my dogs in peace and nobody comes out and points which mm. breed i have you know to to uh, to and such maybe a very popular pet breed also got banned red right? jack russell yeah so all types of terriers were listed and um, it was just uh, i think there is a lot of stay orders on that ban now in delhi and karnataka and everything so i don't think that that ban is actually going to get implemented because great, great. you know no, they have not written the further course of action like when they will ban mm. who will come to our house to check the dog and what will be when they take away the dog where will they take away the dog like you know so, so many of my questions are unanswered it's just a simple statement that they have said very vaguely you have achieved so many things in life you have come this far in life team suman versus human salutes you for your achievement and the great work you are doing mr adnan thank you sir and i salute you for bringing out the voices of various people uh, you know despite your challenges and still making so much impact in the world adnan ji now we have come to a stage where i have this question for all my guests coming on to the show and uh, you will certainly have no option to say no you have to answer this okay now i'll be giving you a super power in your hands to change something in this country and i want to know what is that one particular thing you are going to change mm, that's a tough one <laughs> but uh, i mean i would then probably try to focus on uh, my subject matter and uh, you know on dogs and like i said before if i am if i'm giving um, you know more than super power if i've been given one change then i would bring about uh you know more laws and regulation for 
animals and dogs that you know more respect for animals um, than they are getting right now because even the animal cruelty laws are um, so light and so lenient that people are just mutilating the animals and getting away with it so the crime should be equal to hurting a human being it should be counted as murder just like murdering a person mm-hmm. and uh, if i'm able to change that there will be so many positive changes because people will respect their animal they will not abandon the animal you know everyone will think clearer so i think my superpowers will always be surrounded by uh, by pets and if i could you know somehow tell all the dogs to stay calm and not disturb people around them then they will not get abandoned so that would be nice wonderful awesome talking to you mr adnan khan thank, thank you so thank much you. for giving me this great opportunity to host you on suman versus human Thank you. Likewise, I had a great time too. Looking forward to the video I shared with my family. Thank you.